Listen, it, what, a, what a great uh, thrill it is for me to be here to be part of this announcement. Uh, but first of all, let me extend uh, my great appreciation and congratulations to all of you who have in any way been part of uh, making this vision a reality. David, it is absolutely great to see you here to be part of this. Uh, uh, I remember one of the first times you came into the Bank of Montreal in our boardroom talking about this, uh, uh, and Leo could never stop talking about it. Uh, but to see this, to see this come to reality, it takes a tremendous amount of work on behalf of so many volunteers, and I know a number of them are represented here, and on families who are here whose children have benefit, benefited from this, and the fact that we as a, as a government can be part of helping uh, to continue to build and preserve and ensure uh, that we protect uh, the beauty of uh, this area to, so that uh, whoever comes next to enjoy it, from children to community, uh, that they'll get the real uh, natural uh, look uh, of what this place has been part of. I would like to recognize a number of uh, people who were involved in this. I see the IWK is here. Uh, who are part of this, the Municipality County of Kings, and I know Councillor Patricia Bishop is here representing the county. Uh, Aylesford uh, and Loon Lake Property Owners Association, I know there's a number of them here. Acadia uh, University, uh, the Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society, and of course the Ecology Action Centre, who's been part of uh, this announcement today. In addition to supporting the work here, today's announcement is about protecting some of our most beautiful land. And government protects lands for all for many reasons. To conserve the forests and wetlands, to protect endangered species, and to protect our beaches and coastal areas. And in this case, the protections offer, offers all Nova Scotians, not just those who will avail themselves of this beautiful facility, but all Nova Scotians to learn more of our natural heritage. Our large number of people who were involved in this announcement today to make this really a project a reality. And again, I want to thank all of the people and organizations involved for their tremendous partnership in making this happen. They include the people that I mentioned, but also the Nova Scotia Nature Trust, the Nature Conservancy of Canada, who are both important partners in private land conservation. As I mentioned earlier, Minister Glavine has been a big champion of this project uh, at, at our caucus table and at the cabinet table, and I know my colleague, King South Keith Irving, as well have been a champion to ensure that we as a government uh, become a partner with community to, to protect the land around this space uh, to ensure that your vision continues to be protected. Uh, and we, in a small way, are helping you continue to go to the next level. Today I have uh, the ministers that are with me, but I'm going to call on Minister Delory to actually make the official announcement and also to make an announcement about some other uh, beautiful parts of this province that we are protecting on behalf of all Nova Scotians. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, uh, Mr. Premier, uh, Yoakum, uh, distinguished guests and, and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as the Premier noted, uh, I have the distinct uh, honour and, and pleasure of providing the details of, of the uh, official announcement. Uh, which is the uh, purchase of lands uh, adjacent uh, to this Brigadoon camp here. Um, these lands that uh, the province has recently acquired uh, total of almost 600 acres alongside uh, the beautiful lakes here um, in the region. Um, the protection afforded uh, by the purchase and protection of these lands is going to be uh, complementary to the work being done here at Brigadoon. Uh, because it's going to allow the children and youth here that connect uh, with nature and enjoy the outdoors uh, through personal experience provided through the camp uh, experience here as well. And through that, they can grow their own appreciation uh, for the value of protecting our natural spaces. Um, I do want to thank, as the Premier has al already, uh, all of those people who have long championed uh, this purchase. Um, my role in, in this is uh, much shorter. In, in time than uh, many others, uh, but as uh, David and I uh, talk about uh, every time I bump into him, which seems to be uh, fairly frequently uh, since I've come into this position, uh, this was uh, a meeting with uh, my senior staff and, uh, and David uh, were, uh, I think that was my first official meeting uh, with an outside uh, body uh, to talk about uh, the possibility and the potential 
uh, of some lands that were up for sale in and around this property. Uh, and, and for me, uh, it was a very easy decision to say that is something that I think, uh, you know, staff recognized the ecological uh, and, and value from a natural conservation perspective. Uh, it didn't take much of a, of a sell job uh, for me to identify uh, the value that goes far even beyond that uh, for the campers and the people uh, around this community. So for all of you uh, that have been working on uh, with this camp and on this deal uh, for much longer time than I have, uh, I do want to thank you for your dedicated uh, commitment. I, I believe uh, you know, you've been at it for a long time, uh, been doing some fantastic work. Um, in addition to uh, providing the recreational uh, fun uh, and the recreational, recreational activities for uh, campers around here uh, and the residents of the area, this purchase also has the opportunity to benefit uh, the, the scientific community. Uh, we have uh, Acadia University nearby. Uh, there'll be opportunities for uh, the university uh, faculty and students uh, to uh, take the opportunity to study this land because this land will be available for them uh, to do some, some research and, and contribute to uh, the great uh, work and academic work that they do and, and research uh, to uh, help move our, our province forward as well. This 594-acre uh, purchase uh, adjacent to Fancy Cove is a, a key component of several land acquisitions uh, that the province has finalized in recent weeks uh, across the province. Um, the lands that we purchase as a province uh, are acquired for a variety of reasons, from uh, access, as I've mentioned, to recreational and educational purposes, but also for the natural habitats uh, for endangered species, uh, plants, and wildlife. Some of the other lands that we purchased as a province recently include Indian Island, which is a very important uh, ecological uh, site in Muscadabit Harbor, uh, because it's a, a wintering area for black duck and other migratory birds. We also purchased 100 acres at Egg Mountain, uh, near my own home uh, riding of Anakinish, uh, which contains uh, a lot of mature hardwood uh, and is an important spawning area for native trout and salmon, and it's a habitat for endangered mainland moose uh, as well. Also in that region, uh, we've protected another 50 acres uh, around the uh, James River watershed, uh, which is a very important water supply for the town of Anakinish. Uh, nearly 10 acres at uh, Baccaro uh, provide a critical habitat for the endangered uh, piping plover and is again uh, an area that is very valuable for a scientific research uh, perspective. The province doesn't just purchase lands for protection. Uh, as was mentioned, we have uh, partnerships and, and private individuals also make land donations that they want to see the lands protected. Uh, and a gift from uh, Brenda and Donald Theakston uh, to the River Inhabitants Nature, Trust, uh, Nature Reserve sorry, enable us to connect the frontage on river inhabitants and improve habitat protection for a threatened wood turtle, Atlantic salmon, and speckled trout. The purchase of 100 acres of McGowan Lake in Queens County also helps us protect the endangered Blanding's turtle and threatened ribbon stake. As mentioned, those donations and, and some of the land purchases that come through, um, are, well, they, they, they require and, and uh, take on partnerships with other organizations as well. Uh, we uh, had a three-year partnership with Nova Scotia Nature Trust and the Nature Conservancy of Canada. Through our partnerships with these organizations, we've concerned, conserved uh, a range of more than uh, 3,000 acres uh, being turned over to the province for legal protection status, and an equal amount of land being secured for protection by those organizations. That would be upwards of around 6,000 acres of, of land being protected in this province as a result of our partnerships with those organizations. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I encourage you to visit our website, the Nova Scotia environment, view the map that outlines all of the acquisitions and their special features that uh, we're providing to the province. And I'll close by getting back to the really exciting part of the announcement today by saying what a great day it is for the children of the campers and their families and all of the people who will uh, benefit directly uh, here from Brigadoon Village, for the community, surrounding community, champions across the province that have worked tirelessly to secure the lands, uh, it is a great day for, for all of them, for all of Nova Scotia, and uh, that are committed to better understanding our natural environment and protecting it for generations to come. So thank you very much, and I'd like to pass it on to uh, my colleague, Minister Glavine, Minister of Health and Wellness.
Well, good afternoon, uh, Premier, uh, Cabinet colleague, uh, Randy. Uh, many that I would actually like to acknowledge and introduce, obviously, the two Davids, uh, David Graham, David McKeague, and thanks for the invite, uh, David. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to a few others as well here this afternoon, but when this was first, uh, I don't think I just barely touched the Cabinet table, maybe, if the Premier doesn't mind me speaking to this, that I started to talk about Brigadoon because we were already getting some uh, correspondence, but uh, it wasn't lost on me when David first came to our caucus and proposed this, really a dream, but a dream that, you know, as a teacher really touched me. And uh, I said, in, in any way I can help. And so today is really emotional for me. It really, really is. And I remember when it was first, uh, you know, we had looked like we had secured the land. We had secured the lands, and they talked about, oh, yeah, at, at the Department of Health, they talked about, oh, yeah, it'll probably be a press release. I said, what? A press release? Well, I think they've kind of saw how big this was, and they gave me at least 10 pages of notes uh, here today. Now, my colleague Randy is a professor, and you know, his day is just, would just be getting going if he were back at St. Evex, whereas this is the last class for me at West Kings. So I'm wound up. I'm wound up. I'm ready to go. But uh, I do want to acknowledge as well uh, MP Scott Bryson, I know, who's had a, an interest in this project right from day one. Um, and uh, also uh, Raymond Plourd. Uh, Raymond and I have talked about this area. And while not necessarily having all of those great ecological reasons for preserving, uh, I, I think uh, if you've ever took a canoe or a boat into Fancy Cove, there truly is something special about this place. And, uh, and I was introduced by a man by the name of George Sweet uh, to Fancy Cove. We were out here dealing with some other issues and, uh, when I first became an MLA. And I met Andy Brisky, and Andy has been heading up a group called El Poa which is Aylesford Lake, Loon Lake, and surrounding area. And Andy started to talk about the need to preserve more land uh, out in this area. So there's a dream come true for many today. And I know as uh, Ann McGuire, the CEO of uh, the IWK, who is here today, realizes the importance of this place. And uh, Ann is right over here. And uh, this is very much complimentary uh, to, uh, to the work that they do, uh, to give those children an opportunity uh, to, uh, to come here. And uh, it truly is uh, good to be here with you and to have you come for this wonderful event. The journey to protect the land uh, around uh, the lake started some time ago. In fact, I asked the librarian when I was in the legislature on uh, Friday, when I asked the first question, and it was uh, back in uh, 2009, that I asked uh, the, the question about uh, preserving land around what would become uh, Brigadoon. Uh, so this announcement today, it's good to know the surrounding area will be preserved. And the children and all who come to the camp will have access, great access to the natural world. And that the purchased lands will provide more outdoor recreation in the area. Brigadoon, that is such a strong name. And just saying the word makes me think of hope and possibilities. And that's what David McKeague left with me when he made his first touchdown uh, at our caucus uh, quite a few years ago now, David, isn't it? Indeed. So years ago, I heard your dream for what this place could be for children and families, for healing and growing. And I've, and I've had the privilege of seeing this facility and natural space take shape. I've seen your passion and hard work make the dream come true. Protecting this place is so important. See, I am getting through this quickly. <laughs> Brigadoon is, is more than a summer camp. We all know the social benefits of taking part in physical recreation. We know the important role that engaging in various forms of physical activity can have on our health and on our lives. We know the importance of playing and having fun for our hearts and souls, our minds and bodies. Brigadoon is a year-round facility that serves hundreds of children and youth in many ways. I just want to capture a moment this March. What was March this year was 
the dead of winter, I think, for, for, most, uh, for most of us in, who stayed in Nova Scotia for the winter. There was a youth corps camp that took place here in March. And the weather didn't stop 40 youths from across the province from gathering here to explore a range of health issues, such as healthy eating and physical activity and how they could improve their own health. There were games, music, fine arts, cooking lessons, and outdoor play. The Youth Corps project is one step to help build a community of youth across the province who are aware of health issues and who want to be involved in work to improve, your, uh, improve youth health in their communities. After the camp, and, she, and this young lady probably captured for all 40 who came here, after the camp, one young girl said that the people she met, the story she heard, the things she learned for the first time in her life, she enunciated, I want to make a change in the world. The camp inspired her. That's the magic of Brigadoon, and that's the outcome of overpowering, uh, empowering young people by making it easier to be healthy and to promote and want to be part of a culture of wellness. Brigadoon Village and the province's decision to preserve the surrounding lands embody what we are trying to do through Thrive. I'll close by saying it is wonderful that you are giving children and youth who face difficult health challenges a place to learn, to grow, and to play. There are many people here today who have made that happen through hard work. I think of Margie and Jim Lamb, who held breakfast after breakfast to raise money. The Lions Clubs and all of those organizations and individuals who really could place a brick in this place for their contribution. So their dedication and commitment to develop the village and to running the camps in the future. I know that there are many people who could not be here today because it is their job, right hand, to take care of the health needs of our children and youth. To them and to all of you, I give my heartful thanks for everything you do every day and for what you do to make Brigadoon an unforgettable and extraordinary experience for children, youth, and families. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. Uh, before I begin my official notes, I do want to let the Minister of Environment know that I wasn't stalking him whenever we ran into one another. We just happened to be in the same places a number of occasions. But uh, it turned out quite well, I think, that we did run into one another. Uh, Mr. Premier, uh, Minister Delory, Minister Glavine, Mr. Stroink, Mr. Irving, Mr. Bryson, and all our other guests here today, including our board chair uh, at Brigadoon, Greg Blunden, and our founder, Dave McKegg. Thank you for making the trip today to this incredible place we call Brigadoon Village to share in this wonderful announcement. And uh, on, a, on a little side note, many of our campers call Brigadoon their home. And uh, to Dave, I just want to say, welcome home. So. Uh, Richard Louvre, who is the author of Last Child in the Woods, when he was discussing the phenomenon of nature deficit disorder, stated that the future will belong to the nature smart. Those individuals, families, businesses, and political leaders who develop a deeper understanding of the transformative power of the natural world and who balance the virtual with the real. The more high-tech we become, the more nature we need. We are thrilled that the Premier, his Cabinet, and the Government of Nova Scotia have recognized the importance of, that the natural world plays in a child's development, and that the importance of, in the importance of Brigadoon Village to Atlantic Canadian children and families living with chronic illnesses, chronic conditions, and special needs. We see these lands as an opportunity for our campers to explore, learn, play, and grow in a natural, protected environment and we look forward to, to being stewards of this area surrounding Brigadoon Village. For our campers who in their young lives have only known hospitals, home, and school, and who have faced challenges that we can never comprehend, the opportunity to go frog hunting, to play in the mud, 
to swim in a lake or to relax in a field at night and look at the stars are things they have often never experienced. Many of our campers have never met another child who shares the experiences of having their chronic illness or chronic condition. These opportunities converge here at Brigadoon Village where the magic, where the magic of camp created by the hard work and dedication of our staff and volunteers transforms children's lives. As Brigadoon Village prepares to welcome more than 500 children to 12 different programs this summer, most of which are unique in Canada, we will be able to incorporate these new spaces now available for us to explore into our camp experience. With our partners, we have and will continue to develop specialized programs that meet the varied needs of our campers. Our guiding principles lead our program development to live sustainably, to be innovative, to be environmentally mindful, to be creative, to be compassionate, to be accountable, to be accessible, to create and build partnerships, to be community-oriented, and of course, to have exceptional fun. Thank you for coming today, and thank you to the Premier, his Cabinet and Caucus again for realizing that the transformative power of nature in a child's life and the transformative power of camp that happens at Brigadoon Village. It, thank you. It's my, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, a gentleman who has been directly impacted in many ways by Brigadoon Village. Not only has he been a part of our board, but his daughter has attended our programs, and so his family is directly influenced by the power of Brigadoon Village. And I'd like to introduce Roger Sinclair. I didn't know there were so many of you in the room. going to Camp Good Time for the last, uh, this will be your seventh year, Camp Good Time, and uh, third year here at Brigadoon. So I do know and understand some of the worries that parents had and families had about sending their uh, child away to uh, a camp facility such as this, or any facility. Um, the whole can here? Okay, let me get this. Oh, it's not, what am I doing? This <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, Patina. All right, sorry. What people need to realize is that uh, this is probably the first time parents have let their kids go away for a week uh, because of their condition or illness. For most of these children, not all of them, but most of them, depending on when they're diagnosed and the nature of the condition. And that is for parents a very terrifying um, uh, thing. Uh, you're going to let your kid get out of your sight for a week? Uh, are the children going to be scared? Are they going to take their medications? Or could they get hurt? Could a bear get them? I mean, all these things go through your head. <laughs> um, and you just don't know quite what to do. If you, if you think of it, when you go to a school and you see parents for the first day of school drop their kids off and they're all emotional, well, just multiply that by 100 if you've got a kid with a, a serious health condition. Um, this facility was purpose-built to deal with and, and, uh, children that have different sort of health issues. So there's a physical aspect of Brigadoon, as you can all see here today, the medical center downstairs, uh, spectacular, the, 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 the environment we're in, the, the lodges were designed specifically for children uh, for all sorts of different health issues. But the other side of this is the counselors, the people, the people here at Brigadoon. They are trained, they understand, and the kids love them. So there's a sort of two parts of the breed, the people and the facility. We've been focused on the facility over the last number of years to get the thing built, but the, it really it's all about the kids and the, and the people that work with those children. The parents, it's interesting, the first year they come here, I suspect, and I can talk to the staff about this, first year they come, and the parents are just very worried. I mean, this, this is the first time they've actually had a break themselves, and they're very worried about the children. But it's interesting, I suspect, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, but the second and third year, no, they can't get here fast enough. And 
and the parents love it, and the kids love it, and they feel at home. Um, the person that should be here today is my daughter. <coughs> She's the uh, public speaker in my household. Well, she and her mother, not me. Um, but she wants to continue on when she's finished. She's in grade eight this year. She wants to uh, come back as a counselor, and 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 we're still a whole. It's our favorite time of year, favorite uh, week of the year is here. Um, we had a, an event Monday night, the Blue Tie Bingo in Halifax, very successful event. We had a young lady whose picture's right here, Jill, right, Jill? And uh, she said, she was addressing the, the group, and she said, if I had been offered, and this is a quote, if I had been offered a week, if I was offered a week at Disney World, or a week at Brigadoon, I'd take Brigadoon any day of the week. How about that for endorsement? <laughs> it will take it. So uh, I want to thank the province. I want to thank uh, the Premier of Nova Scotia. I want to thank all the people of Nova Scotia and the region for supporting this facility. This is a world-class facility. Uh, it's evidence of how people in this region feel about their children. And uh, I want to thank you all. Thank you, Roger. Now I invite, uh, now I invite the, the Premier, Minister Glavine, Minister Delore, Delore to unveil the map of the new Crown lands at Fancy Cove. <laughs> 